Bethlehem was busy, strangers filled the town. All my rooms were taken, everyone had settled down. Then Joseph came a-knockin', and I'm famous now, I guess. Here's the lesson that I learned, hear what happened next. Number 25, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Number two, five in your hand. Yeah. 
service, I'm going to ask you to be seated. I'm going to ask Brother Kyle to come and open us in prayer, and then I'll come back and give you a few announcements. Lord, we thank you for uh, your wonderful love for us, Lord, for coming and dying for us. Lord, I do pray that your hands would be on this service tonight. Lord, I pray that we would uh, bring you glory and honor from the service, Lord, but that our lives would bring you glory and honor each and every day. Lord, help us in this endeavor. In your name I pray, amen. Well, we're looking forward to the 14th uh, this next year on the 14th. We have Vision Night. Looking forward to some things that we'll present about what uh, we look forward to this year. But uh, long before that, on this Tuesday, day after tomorrow, the Oasis Group and uh, we'll be meeting over in the Family Life Center at 1130 for a potluck. And if you're 55 plus then we invite you to come. Brother Dan does a great job with that. It's just a wonderful time to come in and fellowship, and you maybe have never been before, but I challenge you. Uh, you say, well, I'm not sure. All you have to do is just come in that door into the Family Life Center. The building looks like a gymnasium over there. Just walk in there. They'll take care of you from there. Just come in about 11, 15, 11, 30 will start. So uh, we invite you to all of that. We're going to have a good time, I'm sure. And then there's some Bible reading schedules out in the lobby, and those are uh, there for this coming year. And as I challenge this morning, I want to re, uh, reissue this challenge. I'd love for everybody to commit to be in the book every day this year. Some people are big on New Year's resolutions. Some people don't make them. But here's a great one that all of us could make, and that is we're going to strive to be in the Bible every day and let the Bible get in us. You say, well, should I read it through chronologically? Should I read it through this way or that? I'm not so concerned about how we do it. I'm just concerned that we do it and uh, whether you take a section of it, say, I'm really going to focus on that this year. Uh, maybe you're going to take the New Testament. Maybe you're going to take the whole thing. But just be in it. There's some Bible reading schedules back there, and I trust it will be a blessing to you. One last thing I mentioned this morning is the couples retreat. That's coming up March the 1st and 2nd. There are some information sheets out on the table to your right as you go. And uh, that just tells a little bit about that March 1st and 2nd. It will be a great time in Pigeon Forge, a way for you to invest in your marriage. And uh, you will always, always, I believe, be blessed if you input some good things into the relationship you've got with your spouse. And so that's an invite to you. I forget the cost, but it's, uh, we, we don't make anything on, we don't even cover our expenses, but we cover most of them through the, to the entrance fee. And, uh, that'll be a blessing to your family or to your marriage. I know it will be. So those are just some of the announcements I wanted to keep you up to date on. And I'm going to ask you to stand again. I'm going to ask the choir is going to come down, but hymn number 443, what a day that will be. And, uh, they'll come join us here in just a little bit, but let's sing out together tonight.
Let's go to the Lord in prayer for our offering this evening. Lord, we do thank you again for your goodness to us. Lord, I pray that you would bless uh, these offerings as we give these to you. Lord, I pray that uh, you would multiply them and use them in great ways. Lord, in your name I pray. Amen.
amen. Amen and amen. And Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. And so praise the Lord. We worship the one and thank God for that. Well, I just wanted to um, just have a time or so, just a little time, I should say, of testimonies. I have a couple of folks that would testify for us. Um, let's see. Mason, would you mind getting a microphone up there? And Andrew Davis, would you mind getting that microphone from him? And um, we'll come to you in just a moment. But um, Brother Kyle, could you get Stephen Gallion over here a microphone and just want to hear a little bit. We're getting ready for the last of the year. This is the it. And I just want to have a testimony or two. Brother Stephen, would you give the Lord a praise tonight? I tell you, it's hard to the pastor said uh, about a half, well, first I thought he said half a good testimony. So I was like, well, I don't know what that means. But he said half a minute, and it's, as I sit here thinking, it's really hard to keep it to a half a minute. God's been so good to me this year. Um, he, he's blessed in so many ways. And, and one thing that boils down to, in the last several years of, um, of running my business, I always had to look to God for my money, for my paycheck, for for uh, supplying every single need that I had. And it's been amazing to see how he has done that over and over and over and over. I, I don't understand it. I'd sit on my bed and I'd look at my wife and I'm like, I'm not sure how we're gonna pay the bills this month. And somehow the money came in and I'm not sure where it would come from or how it would get there. God would supply a job or something. And he just blessed over and over. And it's amazing to me how if we trust God he will supply, and he will, no matter what, he will supply our needs. So I just want to praise him for that. Thank you so much, and praise the Lord. Kyle, would you give it to Brother Larry Trent right behind you there? Well, I want to thank the Lord for saving me, and uh, I'd like to thank the church all these years giving me a privilege to serve, and uh, that's been a blessing to me to be able to just serve the Lord, and that's what he wants us to do when we get saved. But the uh, Lord's been so good to me. I mean, you can look back, and, of course, I've got sickness in my family, uh, and uh, everybody's got sickness, and some worse than others. But, you know, the Lord is good, no matter what. And, uh, and I was telling the deacons there a little earlier, uh, uh, you know, uh, we got to just put our trust in the Lord. And I know it's sometimes uh, easier said than done. But uh, if we put our trust in the Lord, listen, we're Christians. We don't have to worry about nothing. God's got a plan for us. And as I look at all this going on in my lifetime, I've never seen anything like what's going on in the Middle East. But as I tell them, it kind of excites me. Uh, I hate it for the victims. But listen, uh, I, I think uh, coming to the Lord is getting near. It may come in my lifetime. I'm getting to be old, but uh, it may come in my lifetime. And we don't have to be concerned about all that going on over there because if we're a child of God, he's got a plan for us. And uh, we don't have to worry about that. And nothing's going to happen to us unless the Lord allows it. Uh, people worry all the time, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me? Well, if you're in the Lord's will, and like the pastor said, stay in that book, pray every day, and, uh, and just trust the Lord. Uh, he'll meet your needs one way or the other. Uh, if it's leaving this old earth, uh, man, what better could you ask for? Yeah, amen to that. Heaven. Or uh, leave you here on this earth. <clears throat> and I said, uh, his ways are not our ways. And so he's got a plan for us. And, uh, I mean, I'm happy in the Lord. And uh, I'm not perfect. I'm not anywhere near what I should be. But I know God knows my heart. And he knows that I want to be in his perfect will. Amen. Amen to that. And, uh, be praying for Larry. He's got uh, shoulder surgery on Wednesday. And uh, so we're praying for that. Brother Ford Davis, Andrew, would you take it over to your dad and... Um, Brother Ford, would you mind just giving a word for the Lord? And well, I, I guess I can talk out of this right here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm so thankful. The Lord's been uh, good to me and my family uh, for so many years. He's, he's provided, he's taken care of us. As my 
children are growing on up now. Angela and I get to talking, and uh, we're about to enter a new stage of life with them. Uh, Andrew here is going to be getting married next year, and I suspect Gabe's probably not going to be too far behind. And I won't talk about Allie at this point, but uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, Lord's been good uh, down through the years. I, I just seems like no time ago the kids were so little and. Uh, uh, as we go through the stages of life, there's different challenges, uh, you know, trials, troubles, different things, and a lot of good times too, but the Lord's always been there, uh, and I'm so thankful for him, thankful for my family and for, for this church. I mean, just, just a great blessing for pastor, for you, and just, uh, it's just so many good things the Lord's done. I can't praise him enough. Amen to that. Well, Andrew, if you don't mind, go around and get either Jeff Roden or Bobby Brown, one or the other, but I'm going to do somebody else down here. So, uh, Kyle, if you don't mind to get it to Brother Archie Johnson back there behind you. Well, it's, uh, it's so exciting to be part of uh, a growing church. Buffalo Ridge is just an exciting place, and when I talk to people here, I just see it uh, on your face and all the new people. It's just, it's just awesome to see God working in each of all of our lives. And I'm just amazed at his mercy and his grace and all the blessings that he, he gives to us. Uh, this year, we welcome two miracles uh, in our family, two little babies, two mm -hmm. grandchildren. And I know I've seen some other people that have grandchildren this year and that's just that's just so exciting to see God work in those miracles and not only that but the miracles that he works in each and all of our lives uh, every day you know I think of so many people that I talk to uh, uh, brother Bob Daniels and different people and just the miracles uh, and uh, I just look forward to this coming year 2024 to see what he has for us amen to that amen Amen. All right. Um, Andrew, who'd you f decide on? Bobby? I drew the straw. Okay. <laughs> Started earlier tonight, Pastor, with your comments to the deacons. <clears throat> and I hear it all throughout these testimonies about how faithful God is. And um, just when you look back to the beginnings of the time of this church all the way through now, the things that he's brought, brought members through and brought the church through, God is faithful. And I think as we look forward, the uncertainty that we see, um, we can have confidence that God is faithful. And I see it in my life. I see it in my children's life. And um, praise the Lord for it. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to turn it on Jeff anyways. Jeff, I'm going to have him bring it to you next. But Kyle, would you come over here to Larry Stover? And Brother Stover, would you mind just giving a quick word of testimony for the Lord, just something that he's blessed you in lately? Well, I've been sitting here listening to these men give their testimonies. And it just reminds me of how the Lord has been so good to me and to my family. I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. Yes. And I just can't get over how good the Lord's been to me. And I'm so thankful for this church and the people that go to this church and uh, the friends that I've made here down through the years. Yeah. And, and uh, the stand this church takes in the community and around the world and the mission work that we get accomplished through this church. And I thank for Pastor Hurtman. Amen. I appreciate your preaching here to us. Amen. Even so, at times it might get on my toes a little bit, but <laughs> I still well, appreciate it. Well, I, if Linda didn't I give me so much stuff. I of listening to my wife. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, if Linda get me, didn't give me that list every week, I wouldn't know what to preach oh, on. That's, so. that's <laughs> yeah. Amen. We say that laughing, but it comes home back to me. <laughs> but I do appreciate Amen. this church. I really do. Praise the There's Lord. not a person in this church that I don't love. Amen. And I, think, Amen. I feel a lot of love in this church. Mm. For even me personally. Amen. In spite of myself. Praise the Lord. Brother Jeff. You know, as uh, people has talked, and one thing that I get is the goodness of God. And God has been good, so good to me. You know, thinking back on my life, I was saved as a five-year-old boy. And I struggled with my salvation for years and years and years. But God brought me back. He would always bring me back because I knew I was lost at that five-year-old, and that was a young age. 
But I knew I was lost, and uh, I knew I needed a savior. And I was sitting somewhere right on the piano side about midway back in my little home church in Duffield, Virginia. And I remember standing up and going forward and praying that prayer and getting saved that night. And I just want to thank the Lord that he spoke to me that night. And God has been so good to me through, that, through my life. He has blessed me with a wonderful wife, wonderful kids. And I just praise him for his goodness tonight. Amen. Amen. Kyle, would you finish up with Brother Marty over here? I'm thinking Marty's got summer here beside of him. And uh, Lord willing, summer next spring, we'll be heading over to Botswana. And um, just a lot going on in that family, a lot of great things. And, uh, but give us a testimony if you don't mind, Brother Marty. As I think about everything that's mentioned, I hear the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God, the salvation and all those things that stirred in my heart, and they're true. And the Lord has been good and faithful. And I'm thankful for his word that we can get into and know about him. Yeah. And um, draw closer to him. And, and um, I'm thankful for my family and thankful for how he's um, provided this time last year, we were standing at the cusp of summer having a surgery. Yeah. And this year, we're standing at the cusp of her going to Botswana. The Lord's provided for her in a great way. He's good. He's been good. He's been faithful. We've had this church to come to. We've had all these friends and new faces and people I can't even remember the names all the time. The Lord's just been so good, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what He's going to continue to do in, in our lives and through this church and through you, Pastor. And, Amen. And um, God's just so good, and He's the only one worthy of being praised. Amen to that. He sure is. So thank you, Kyle. That's good enough. We're, I just thought we'd. this is the last service of this year, and uh, it's amazing that the Lord has brought us down to this point and uh, I, I told a few men here earlier, and I told Amy, I uh, texted her while I was over at the church here getting some things ready for tonight. I preached my first sermon 31 years ago, and that was a watch night service, uh, or New Year's Eve um, and 1992. And so we went till midnight. I revamped that service. We'll go to midnight again tonight. And um, so we've got about five hours left. So settle in. Now, I wasn't the only one. There's a bunch of us, and I think after the preaching, maybe we watched Sheffy or something else. Uh, I can't remember what we did, but uh, it was 31 years ago nonetheless, and so we won't go that long tonight. But that was the first time I would preached. My pastor had let me start teaching 7th and 8th grade boys, and so I got the privilege of standing in front of there with Bob Anderson. He had been the teacher for years. He's gone on to heaven just earlier this year, actually. And um, so I got to teach, but uh, that Christ or New Year's Eve night was the first time I ever preached, and I'm sure it wasn't much. Much like tonight might not be much either, but it'll still be good material, just maybe not the delivery. But it just seemed, uh, uh, seems as if it's not been long at all. But, you know, you've been the same way, haven't you, in your life? Some ways you look back and you say, I can't believe a year's gone. Well, we can go any further. Can't believe five years is gone, or 10 years, or 20 years. And then in other ways, it's amazing. I can't even remember how the last stage of our life was. We're coming up on four years being your pastor, and I love this place, but it seems like we've been here for many more than four years. It seems like uh, maybe because of COVID and um, just some of the things we've all gone through, it just seems like we've known each other for a decade or more. And um, it's just amazing the way the Lord has worked, and God has been good. So if this is your first service here at Buffalo Ridge, I trust that you're seeing that the Lord, He is good. And if you're the longest tenured member sitting here tonight, then I trust you're still making the claim that God is so good. And let's just continue to worship the one uh, who is the Son of God. Well, I want to preach for a little while about with Christ, being with Christ in the new year, John chapter 8. It's going to bring this New Year's Eve message from maybe a less than normal passage. It's about the woman caught in adultery. I had another sermon. It's here in my, here in Psalm, where what Psalms where I was going to preach from. But 
this message the Lord just seemed to hover over, but if you'd have seen what the message was uh, just a little while this afternoon, you would say, well, I don't know if there's going to be enough there, and there may still not be, but I came over this afternoon and seemed like the Lord got in what was going to give us tonight, and so I'm, I'm afraid tonight that we are letting some choices, mistakes, and sin even in our lives that's been in our past we're allowing those to keep us from being what God wants us to be today. When you got involved in sin, mistakes, unwise choices, whatever they were, who was the driving force in those? It was either Satan himself, the world, or the flesh. Flesh, the world, the devil. Those are our three, our trinity of enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Sometimes people say, the devil's really fighting me. Well, if the devil's really fighting you at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. whenever your alarm clock goes off, he said, oh, I just couldn't get up when that went off. That probably wasn't the devil. He probably wasn't bothering with you yet. That was probably just your flesh. <laughs> but where did we get in trouble? Where did we make those sinful choices, those unwise decisions, those mistakes? Whatever we did, either the world, the flesh, the devil. But the devil will get us on that first time around by getting us to stumble or just dive in, whatever. The devil will get us on that first time around to get us to stumble. But then after we get that right and we first John 1, 9 it, uh, he's faithful and just, forgive us our sins. We apply first John 1, 9, we confess our sins, and then we get it taken care of. Then the next job of the wicked one is to get you to mull around in what God's already said he's washed and you're done with. So he got you on both fronts. He got you back there when he first got you to get into trouble. But now that you've got it made right, you went to him, he forgave and you're going forward. But then you don't go forward very far to where you're starting rehashing all that that you messed up. And so now he's got you again because he won't let you go on and be what God wants you to be. And so I want to, that's the, my thought as the Lord seemed to hover over me to, not literally, but as he seemed to impress upon me what we are looking at tonight. John chapter 8, verse 1, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that sh such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out by one by one, being at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are thy, those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Father, be with us now as our prayer. We certainly would love for you to meet with us in a special way in this moments that, these moments that we have. In Jesus' name, amen. As I mentioned, I'm afraid that we've let those choices, bad as they were, sin, no need to candy coat it or sugar coat it, I should say, and say, oh, we just made some mistakes. No, we just get into sin. And uh, we made those sinful choices, but we've gotten those in our past. All of you do, all of us do, but we al al allow those to keep us from being all God wants us to be today. We call him the chain breaker. We call him the, the, the one that sets us free, but yet we still allow ourselves to be chained up by some of the past choices that we made there was a friend of mine that couldn't be around his own family because of some difficulties they'd had and some stipulations that were made, bad choices. But he didn't let that keep him from going on and serving the Lord in some other areas and being a blessing to a lot of other children and adults and everybody else that he could help. My pastor says if they would run him off as pastor, which they're probably not likely to do at this point, he's been there 20-some years, 
But if they run him off as pastor, then he'd want to join the maintenance crew so that he could, so he could help do something around Franklin Road Baptist Church so that he could make it a place that people would want to come to and hear about the Lord Jesus Christ so he could shine something, he fix something, or mow something for God's glory. You see, they can, you, we can, I shouldn't say they, we can get ourselves into a mess where we make choices that even affect the rest of our lives. There's things that I could do that would prohibit me from continuing on in the ministry such as I have, but there's nothing that somebody that can do that would keep God from using you after you get right with Him. You may not be able to hold that position that you once held, but you can still do something for the Lord. And so, I wanted to draw a few points from this. We're looking at chapter 8, but verse number 5. This evening, as we have this New Year's Eve message, it's time for us to cast off what others say and listen to Christ. Look in verse 5. Now Moses said in the law, uh, in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Verse number seven. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said, He that's without sin among you, let him ca first cast a stone at her. There will always be someone shouting why you can't do something because of what happened sometime in your past. Let me just say that here at the church, we do background checks on everybody before they mess with, uh, do anything with young people, children, teens, everybody. We want our, our, our children's and teens' safety as our top priority. So that I'm not saying that anybody can do anything, but I am saying that whatever's happened in your life, you ought to be able to find a way to serve God, to do something for God. Don't buy into the lie of the devil that what happened back then keeps you from serving the Lord now. Here was a woman, she was living inappropriately, she was doing what what she ought not to do. It's always wonder. It's always a bit of a mystery to me that they didn't bring the fella. Maybe because he was known by some of them, and I don't know that the Bible doesn't say. So all that's extra. But they bring her, and they say, "Stone her." Moses said, "We have every right to stone her and take her life." And they didn't just mean to uh, throw some at her; they meant to kill her by stoning. And Jesus says, "If we're going to do that, I'd like for the person to step forward that's without sin." And you understand how futile it is for me to throw a stone at you when I've got things in my life that I'm not proud of, just like you've got things in your life that you're not proud of. And please don't misunderstand. I'm not talking about covering over for anything. If something's been wrong in your family, in your life, you ought to get it right thoroughly before the Lord. If it's just between you and God, get it right between you. If it's wrong between you and somebody else, get it right between them and you. If it's wrong between you and the whole church, get it right before between, the, between you and the whole church. I'm a big believer that public sins take care of them publicly, private ones take care of them privately, but it's time that we as Christians cast off what others have said and listen to the Lord Jesus in that circle right there, class, if we were a class, who was the only one without sin? Christ. And he wasn't prone to throw stones at her. A wonderful friend of mine who's in church tonight, no doubt, spent time in a men's home for addictions, and, and Satan and addictions just had him, had him bound very badly. But he got saved and then got right with God. He'd been saved, but he got right with God, went to a home for men with addictions, and was able to just see the Lord work drastically in his life. And that fellow's been a pastor, been the leaders of addictions ministry, Sunday school teacher. He's led so many folks to the Lord. He's always encouraging to me and to many other people. And the reason he is, is because of what God did in his life, basically like this woman, go and sin no more. You understand that when Satan gets us bound up in what people say that we can do and we can't do, again, uh, there's big stipulations on a couple of offices in the, in the Scripture saying who can fulfill these positions, but that, even that doesn't mean that somebody can't be used to the Lord. It just means there may be a couple of things that they can't hold. But since when do we need a position to serve the Lord? I bring you back to what my pastor said. If they don't want me as pastor, I'll be on the lawnmower out there. If they don't want me on the lawnmower, I'll be scraping the sidewalks. If they don't want me to do that, I'll find something that I can do for the glory of the Lord. So I'm telling you this evening that it's time to cast off what others say, and we listen to Jesus. Not only that, but look in verse number 7 as well. It's time that we start concerning ourselves with our own selves. 
He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone. Look at this fundamental shift that's here in the focus of all these scribes and Pharisees. Here they are pointing, it's her, it's her, it's her, it's her. And what does Christ come through and do? So I'd like for each of you to turn that back around and look at you. Bob Kelly used to be the pastor at Franklin Road Baptist Church. He's in heaven now. But he'd say, whenever I point a finger at you, there's more pointing back at me than there are at you. And what Christ did was totally turn that. And when you and I find ourselves in our pharisaical ways, as all of us do, oh, pastor, not me. See, there you go again. (laughs) When all of us find ourselves in those pharisaical ways, I would challenge us to do what Christ did in this passage, and that is turn that around from the person we're accusing and turn it back around at me and say, do I have anything that I need to take care of in my own life? Not only was it time to cast off what others say and listen to Christ, but it's also time to start concerning ourselves with ourselves. lady went home from church and she asked her husband, did you see what Sarah was wearing? He said, no, I didn't see that. He said, did you see uh, how mad Susan got when that person said something to her? He said, no, I didn't see that. Did you see Sam sleeping on the fourth pew back there? He said, no, I didn't see that. She said, why do you even go to church? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's time for us to start worrying about, or worrying if we're worried, we're starting for us to be concerned about what I'm doing. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord standing in the need of prayer. It's not my brother, it's not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And it'd be a wonderful thing if every one of us Christians would, as we enter into this new year, would stop worrying so much about what everybody else is doing and start worrying about what I'm doing. Because if that believer that you're so worried about their actions is a believer, then the Holy Spirit's going to take care of them He's going to show them, bring all things to their remembrance. He's going to convict them. He's going to show them where they ought to be. And so I believe it's time, as Jesus taught these group of men, it's time for us to start concerning ourselves with ourselves and start looking and realizing that I've got enough problems in this old body of mine before I need to start coming to you. I remind you, the only one that had was perfect standing there in the midst was Christ, and he wasn't casting the stones at that lady, so it's time for us to do that. Not only that, but I want you to look at 11 before, verse 11 before we leave. She said, No man, Lord, Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Number three, it's time to live a different life because of Christ. It's time to live a different life because of Christ. Now the heart of this message that God seemed to impress upon me, wouldn't we take this order from Jesus Christ as he gave it to that lady that day when he said, listen, they're not standing here one by one from eldest to the youngest. They start peeling off because when Christ turns that, uh, that, that spotlight back onto them to show them their own problems and then they start saying, who am I to say anything about anybody else? And this one peels off that way and that one peels off the other way and somebody else goes and takes care of it, whatever he's going to take care of. And then it's just Jesus. Jesus and and this woman. And remember that Jesus was the only one that could see her heart and know to go and sin no more. So he was the only one that had any salvation possibilities in him anyways. And he says, go and sin no more. Can I tell you this? I find as I talk to get, get the privilege of talking to people that the one that stops you from going forward from God for God is oftentimes not the people around you, but it's you. It seems like when everybody else forgives you, you have a hard time forgiving yourself. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And so if you're saved, you're this new creature. So as this new creature, reason with me, you got caught up in sin, you fell in sin, you dove into sin, you waded into sin, however you got there, you got there. Be it a big sin, a little sin, I don't know what the difference is, but be it sin. But you got into something you shouldn't have as a believer. Everybody with me? Nobody's, nobody, everybody understands what that means, right? We, we're sin, we don't, we shouldn't sin, but we do, and we are not sinless. So you as a believer, from Brother Dan up here on the front, all the way back, all the way up, all the way to the back, everybody. So you sin. What does God do? If you're, if you're born again, the Holy Spirit resides within you. What's he do? He convicts you. 
He says, hey, son, daughter, that's not the way to live. If you're close, you get it right. Lord, forgive me. I shouldn't have done that. Maybe you're a little hard-headed and you go a little further. He convicts you, but you don't get it right right away. But he convicts you some more. Eventually, chastening's coming. Let's say eventually you get it right. Lord, it's me. Forgive me. After that point, the sin, God convicts you. You get it right. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just, forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You're with me up to this point. This is not a trick question. What else is there? I mean, unless you offended somebody else in that and you can go apologize to them because you already uh, confessed to the Lord and you feel like I need to go do it, then that's, that's added in there. But as far as you getting right with the Lord, what else is there? There is nothing else. So after that point, if you stay caught up in what you got tripped up in earlier, that's on you. That's not somebody else preventing you from going forward. That's you. Did you ever figure out this? That oftentimes it's a lot harder to forgive yourself than it is to forgive somebody else. Maybe you're a hard-hearted somebody, and they come to you and say, I'm really sorry I messed up. Forgive me, please. I'm a, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a whatever. You say, well, it's all right. Let's go forward. All I'm asking you to do is, when you convict, con- confess some sin to God that you got involved in, and you say, what kind of sin's going around? There's all kinds of them. You get mad at your spouse. You be short with somebody. You're ugly to some person. You're unforgiving to somebody. You, you do something. Well, I don't know. But God convicts you. You get it right, 1 John 1, 9 again. Where do we go from there? God says, I cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So here's the question. Who are we going to believe? Your emotions or God's Word? How clean is clean? How much is all? Well, it's pretty obvious. So who's holding you back? This woman. The Bible doesn't go on to say what she did from there. But by the authority of the Son of God, He told her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Be different and go with his blessing. That's not much different than what we've got the great command to do. And that is after we stumble, fall, jump, wade, however you get into sin, and God convicts us and we say, Lord, forgive me. Let's not stop there. Lord, help me go on from here. That's what this woman needed to do. And that's what we need to do as believers. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. There's some folks in this room that some unwise choices that we made a year, two years, ten years ago are still caught up around your feet. And it's still bogging you down because you can't let it go. My friend, would you give it to the Lord? You say, I've given it to him, Pastor, again and again. Well, give it to him once in faith. Say, Lord, forgive me for letting it bother me. I've already confessed it to you. Help me this new year to go on for your glory. Father, bless us now as our prayer. Lord, I don't know how else to give it to them. I pray that these thoughts would have found a lodging place. Lord, I trust that I'm in your will preaching that instead of what the other message is here in my Bible. And Lord, I pray you give some people some release tonight. Lord, I believe some of your wonderful servants, your saints, are allowing themselves to keep beating themselves up over things that have been done a long time ago, and they already ask you to forgive them, but their guilt, 
their regret won't allow them to go forward for you. Lord, give them victory tonight, I pray, please. Please, dear Lord, I ask in Jesus' name. If you're able to, would you stand together when you hear the music playing? And if the Lord's speaking to your heart, I invite you to come. Whether you come or you don't come, is there something in your life right now that God has brought to heart? You've already confessed it. You've already made it right. But just seems like it's always nagging you, always dragging you down. My friend, can I just say it bluntly? That's not God bringing it back to you. That only leaves a pretty obvious choice who it is. Would you do business with the Lord? Come to the altar if you want, if you feel led. Pray there in your seat. There's something that you're supposed to just leave at this church tonight and get out of here free from it. You've confessed it, forsake it, and go on for God's glory. Don't bring it up again. Maybe you're here tonight as they continue to play. Maybe you're here tonight. I didn't preach on being saved, but maybe you're here and you're not sure that Jesus is your Savior. If that's you, my friend, you're, you're feeling a tug on the inside of your heart, would you step out and come and let me or Brother Kyle, Brother Dan, somebody take a Bible and show you how you can be sure you're saved on your way to heaven? Whatever your need is as they continue this verse, please come. Thank you so much. You may look this way. What a joy to be in church on the last day of the year. You may be seated. I'm going to ask Brother Danny to come. We're going to call a business meeting to order. And uh, we've got one item that I'd like to present to you, a mission item. And I'd love to help a, a great missionary that we love. And Brother Danny's going to share with you that what that is. The pastor and the deacons.